Already on my blog, I've done a little introduction into HDI, Human Development Index. So in this video, I've already placed on my blog the advantages and disadvantages of HDI as a measure of economic development, but I just want to talk through some of the points because I realize that it can be a bit confusing. So let's look at the advantages of HDI. Well, firstly, this is the most interesting advantage, I think, is political competitiveness. Like, if you have a market, it's important to have competition, to keep prices low, to stop monopoly, you know, all these things, or to make sure market failure doesn't occur. It's the same with HDI. It's a single kind of value, and all these countries are competing to reach the highest value. And this competitiveness can drive efficiency, and it can really be good for countries. So it's really good because it brings in that political competitiveness, and countries have the will to actually put in to increase people's, you know, um, quality of life and all these kind of factors. It also, rather than using GDP measure, you're using a measure which consists of GDP at PPP as well as health and education. So there are two other factors in uh, with it which gives you a more rounded figure so you get to know more about the country rather than just how much they produce. And health and education are reliable factors. They're not just any old factors like, you know, I was reading the quality of life database, they have like climate as one of their factors. Climate, I mean, come on. So these are reliable and they are decent kind of, you know, factors. It's easy and cheap to get the education data and health data and GDP. These are three measures that anyway the country is going to be um, getting when they when the UN does their reports on human development or wherever it is they're not really that hard to basically collect this data so HDI is not a very particularly expensive method it's a sign of welfare in the future and it can also predict how far um, the AS curve is going to go because if you think about it, improving healthcare not so much but improving education are both signs to how well labour is doing in a country and if labour is becoming more efficient and productive we are either shifting the PPF outside or moving towards the curve or the AS is going to shift our output is going to increase so it can also be an indicator of how well in terms of the future the potentiality is the place doing so it's not just the GDP at the current level which says nothing about the future it gives a sort of scope for prediction government policies are like education and health care and aid and all this. that is government policies so it's also an indicator of how successful government policies have been and this whole success of government again more political competitiveness because it's talking about the success now of your job if imagine if you were like part of the government it would it would be you know your job um also this is more of my um my sort of um advantage now what I came up with when doing a question on time conditions probably I'm not sure if it's useful but it's one figure it's one figure between zero and one every country has this figure this figure that means that you can model this figure you can put it in a regression line if you were trying to put it against something else I don't know what you could do statistical modeling and statistical modeling is good because it can simplify the problems we have and maths can help us predict outcomes and in economics as you might realize predictions and modeling are really important so HDI is good in, the, in terms of those um, kind of pre uh, predicting. Let's look at the not so good aspects, the disadvantages. Well, it takes into account health and education, but it doesn't seem to take into account poverty or other deprivation sort of measures or, you know, how a place is environmentally. These are all important factors. Or how many carbon emissions. This is so important for the 21st century. Why don't we have that included in the HDI? Increase political competitiveness to protect the environment. That doesn't seem to be there. And PPP, purchasing power parity, this seems to change really quickly. So that's why if you're taking a reading of that to convert it to HDI, then it might be uh, inaccurate, misleading, because it might have changed PPP within the time limit you do it in.
There's also a very little sort of sense of income distribution or the quality of life. We don't really, we know that health and education, whether it's good or bad, but we don't know whether it's the rich people are getting extremely good and poor getting nothing or everyone's getting a generalized kind of share of medical care and education. We don't know. Quality of life, again, it's hard to tell from this kind of figure. And things like war, political oppression, that's not taken into account. And that should be because that will fluctuate the value severely. Um, human development is altogether a very, very difficult thing to measure. And um, that's because it's based on normative economics. That's people's opinion on what should happen, not what is actually happening in the world. So it's based on whether I think that it's important that we look into account how close, uh, how much access people have to internet. Whereas somebody else might come and tell me, no, as an economic um, development index, it's important to take into account um, how much access do people have to the supermarket? How far away is the food or clean water access? That might be somebody else's thing. And because it's based on normative economics, nothing is, you know, sacrosanct, based in stone or anything. And it changes over time. HDI is not a value which, you know, you keep using. And, you know, altogether things might change in the future. And it's based on the principle that everything else is the same. So this HDI value might change. And we might say, oh, that country has increased its development. But we don't know because other factors revolving around that country they may have changed. So I hope the videos help just advantages and disadvantages in HDI. Please visit my blog and thank you for watching.